Hey guys, in this video, we will put the spotlight on a 2007 American action thriller film titled Live Free Die Hard. This is an action-packed film, get your snacks, snuggle up and enjoy the video. Let's get started. The movie starts and we see a woman named Mai with a stern expression on her face as she receives a sequence of codes from a bunch of hackers. The woman's attention then shifts to another hacker who is working alone and his name is Matthew Farrell. He delivers her cum codes as well and tries to flirt with her as he compliments the woman's voice. As the hacking continues, one of the hackers presses the delete button and then we see a building explode where the other hackers were working. As the woman sees on her computer screen the word, deactivated, repeatedly indicates the dying hackers. The FBI led by Deputy Director Miguel Bowman gets active and Bowman calls an emergency meeting. He tells his people that they are the ones who are supposed to keep it from happening to other people but the irony is that it has happened to us and we were not able to stop it. NYPD Detective John McLean to go to New Jersey to bring in hacker Matthew Farrell. The scene then changes and we see a couple making out in a car parked on the side of the road. The boy starts to touch her when she does not want to be touched yet and the couple gets into an argument. John McLean then appears, opens the car door, and drags the boy out of his car. This becomes an awkward confrontation as the girl tells her dad to stop. The boy is shocked because the girl has told him that her dad is dead. Upon being confronted, she tells the boy that she must have exaggerated a little. It turns out that she hates her dad so much that she does not even like mentioning him. John's daughter's name is Lucy, they get into an argument before the girl storms off. This is when he gets a call from his boss, who tells him to bring in Matthew Farrell. Matt, on the other hand, is at home, working on his computer, he gets a call from his friend who tries to warn him that his life is in danger but he does not seem to give a fig about that as he gets back to music. His killer hacks into his computer as well and it is about to explode but before Matt can press the delete button, he hears a knock on the door and it turns out to be John McLean. As John talks to him, he tells him that his name is not Matt but to his bad luck, or we say good luck, one of his neighbors calls him saying hi Matt, way to rat him out. This is when John enters his apartment and starts to look around as he questions his life choices. He picks up one of his dolls and questions him if he even has an interest in playing with real girls. As he checks out his doll, he breaks one of the arms of the figure, well, Matt does not like that so much. The assassin on the other hand is sick of waiting for the bomb to detonate. He decides to just screw the bomb and take a shot himself. As he is about to do that, a shootout begins between John and the assassin. John saves the hacker and manages to escape the place of the attack in his car. John informs the authorities about the incident while Mai goes to her boss. Her boss's name is Thomas Gabriel, who happens to be a powerful man as he has a good team of hackers working under his payroll. On their way, Matt tells John that he breached a particular security system working for Mai. He reveals that on his end, he was doing ethical hacking. He tells McLean he had written an algorithm for Mai to crack a specific security system for white hat purposes. As they drive on, they talk about different things and music happens to be one of those things. Gabriel's hackers, on the other hand, get to business, Gabriel comes up with a plan and gives it to his hackers, the stage one of his plans is to disrupt the traffic system of the country by hacking into it. As they get to that, all the lights on the road signals turn green, and well, chaos is due to erupt. The situation becomes chaotic on the roads and in no time, there are numerous road blockages. When John realizes they are not going to be able to move further, he decides that they will walk from there on. Now that they have successfully achieved what they wanted through plan 1, Gabriel tells his team that it is time to move on to the next plan. Well, the next plan is even more dangerous than the previous one. Gabriel orders his team to hit the financial sector and stock markets, where he causes the stock market crash, which could give a heart attack to many. John on the other hand finally gets to the Department of Security with Matt. Matt watches TV and is shocked to learn what's happening out there. He tells them that this is a very organized cyber attack and their plan seems to be the destruction of the country's infrastructure. He calls it the to fire sale cyber attack. Brown does not seem to agree with him and tells him that there is no such thing as these are just simple myths. John and Matt again hit the road as they make their way to Homeland Security. Mai, however manages to hack the system in the car, the car driver does not realize what is going on, and to their good luck, Matt recognizes her voice right away. 
John right away goes on to confront her and Gabriel then talks to him. As they talk, they throw insults at each other, Gabriel taunts John about his financial situation and also calls him a man working in an old-fashioned way. He also mocks the fact that John is separated from his family. Gabriel then goes on to wipe out his 201k pension in an instant and comes up with an offer for John. He offers to make him rich if he kills Matt right away. John does admit that the idea sounds very tempting but he will still pass. Gabriel on the other hand is not the man to take no for an answer, so, he right away orders his team to kill them both. The next thing we see, there is a chopper above their car and it starts to rain bullets on them. John retaliates and takes out of one of their men right away. After a very close incident where both of them are about to get crushed, John says enough is enough and takes down the chopper. He fends off the attackers, destroying the chopper and all but one of the terrorists. Desperate, McLean asks Farrell what would be Gabriel's next move. Well, Gabriel is there to explain that to us as he is the one putting it to motion. He orders his men to infiltrate the power grid of the superstation. We then get to see that Gabriel is not just Mai's boss, he is his lover as well as they go on to share an intense kiss before she leaves for a mission in which she is going to disguise herself as an FBI agent. John needs a phone as he has to talk to the boss, he calls Bowman from a street phone. Gabriel's team on the other hand keeps up their job of keeping the common people scared for their lives. They even go on to make a fake video in which we see the White House demolished. Matt on the other hand now understands the next stage of the plan as well, he tells John that the next stop is going to be the disruption of the power grids but this is something they cannot do just sitting in there. It is going to require Gabriel's team to physically show up at the station if they successfully want to put the plan into motion. They manage to get a car and drive to the power station. They get there and they find Mai. John stops her at gunpoint while Mai gets to business and undo the work she had done before they arrived. Mai on the other hand is not just a hacker, she reveals that she has some moves too. John and Mai get into a physical fight and she gets the upper hand when she kicks him out of the building. She then turns her attention to helpless Matt, she makes him follow her commands but to Matt's good luck, John is not an easy man to fend off, he returns and throws her down an elevator shaft. Mai does not survive that and that's the end of her. Matt gets down to business again, he quickly reactivates the security and then hacks into Gabriel's system. He even manages to take a look at the man through his webcam. They right away send his picture to the boss. Much to their dismay, Bowman right away recognizes the man as he tells them that Gabriel was the chief programmer for infrastructural security in the Department of Defense. Bowman also reveals that they used to work together. He tells John that he warned the Department of Weaknesses that made America's network infrastructure vulnerable to cyber warfare, but he was ignored, and his unorthodox methods got him fired, and he is out for revenge. Now, he has another reason to destroy them and that is the death of his mistress Mai. As he learns the news of her death, he is enraged and orders his hackers to reroute the gas lines to the grid as he wants to make it explode. John detects it just in time and they escape before they are taken by the explosion. That really was close. After a near-death experience, they get into an argument on whether they should go to Matt's friend Warlock for help or not. They decide to go and travel by helicopter to the home of a super hacker, Frederick Warlock Kaludis in Baltimore. Warlock does not really like John as he gets to know that the man's knowledge of these things is next to nothing. Warlock identifies the piece of code Farrell wrote for Lynn as a means to access data at a Social Security Administration building in Woodlawn, Maryland. He confirms Gabriel's former ties as a government employee. Doing a trace route, Warlock locates Gabriel. The Woodlawn building is actually an NSA facility intended to back up the nation's personal and financial records in the event of a cyber attack and was designed by Gabriel himself. The attack on the FBI triggered a download of financial data to Woodlawn, data which Gabriel plans to steal. Meanwhile, ordered by Gabriel, Gabriel then taps into the connection they made, which reveals the location of John's estranged daughter Lucy, whom he kidnaps. John and Gabriel then meet, virtually, John telling him he will lose. Warlock then tells them that Gabriel is gonna go after a social security building in Woodlawn. Gabriel then goes on to shoot his own hackers knowing that he does not need them anymore. We learn that Woodland is a place that contains data backup of all the accumulated wealth of America. Gabriel now has two choices in front of him, 
he can delete all the data and create massive chaos. Or he can become the richest man in the world. John and Farrell race to the Woodlawn facility. Matt finds the facility's main server and encrypts the data Gabriel's men downloaded before getting captured. Gabriel then takes Farrell and Lucy with him as he flees. John pursues them, hijacking their semi-mobile base. Accessing the communication system of an F-35B Lightning II, Gabriel orders the pilot to attack the truck John is driving, but the jet is destroyed by falling debris. John survives and sees Gabriel's vehicle pull into a nearby hangar. There, Gabriel demands that Farrell decrypt the financial data. When he refuses, Gabriel shoots him in the knee and threatens to kill Lucy. John arrives, killing two of Gabriel's men, but he is shot in the shoulder by Gabriel's last man, Emerson. Gabriel positions himself behind John, putting the barrel of the gun in his shoulder wound. John then pulls the trigger. The bullet travels through John's shoulder and hits Gabriel in the chest, killing him instantly. Matt then grabs a handgun and kills Emerson as the FBI arrives. Afterward, John thanks Matt for saving Lucy's life, who takes a romantic interest in him. This is where the movie ends. Wow, that was quite an interesting story. Wouldn't you agree? Let us know what your thoughts are after watching it. Like and subscribe for more awesome videos like this. See you all in the next one.